90% of Australia's plants are found nowhere else in the world and they were used and managed and celebrated by Aboriginal Australians for at least 60,000 years. In the last 200 years or so since European colonisation, they've been beset by a range of threats, foremost habitat loss and clearing for agriculture and urbanisation, but also weeds and plant diseases and herbivore grazing and alterations to ecological processes like hydrology and changed fire regimes. Twelve Australian plants have gone extinct since European colonisation and we know that there's at least 1,300 species that are considered rare or threatened at a national level and there's likely to be at least 10 times more than that that are considered rare or threatened at state levels. So these declines are going to mean that more species go extinct in the future without targeted management. The good news is that we have the knowledge and the means to stop further extinctions within the Australian flora. And that is what the Action Plan for Australia's Imperiled Plants aims to do. So the action plan for Australia's imperiled plants is designed to complement recent action plans that have been done for birds and mammals and reptiles. We've spoken to hundreds of experts, botanists, land managers, people in state departments and identified the 50 plant species that we think are the most perilously close to extinction in the near future. And those are the 50 species that are featured in the imperiled plant action plan. And for each of those species, we provided an idea of their distribution, their conservation status, uh, a summary of their habitat and their ecology, their conservation listing and recent population trends and what management and research actions are really needed to pull these things back from the brink of extinction. So many of the species in the action plan have very few individual plants left. For example, Acacia leptoneura, Banksia montana, Caledonia pumila and Pomelia venosa each have less than five mature individual plants left in the wild, while Acacia pharyngides, Divisia candidan, Eremophila pinotifida, Eucalyptus ornans and Sporidia fontiswoodii each have less than 20 mature plants. So every plant is going to have a different suite of management actions that are required to save it from extinction and promote its abundance. And foremost among them at a national scale is habitat protection. So really ensuring that we don't lose any more remnant vegetation that these plants depend on. There's also a lot of plants are not recruiting. Um, that's a big long-term problem. There's no young plants coming up to replace the older ones and that's going to take research into their germination requirements and seed banks and implementation of appropriate disturbance and fire regimes. Some of the plants have become restricted to tiny remnants with only a few mature individuals left and in those cases genetic work is going to be required to increase their numbers and maintain their genetic base into the future. I hope the plan has broad appeal to conservation scientists and people working on the ground and I also hope that people who have an interest in the Australian flora and their patch of bush that may well have some of these plants growing in it because a lot of them occur in really close proximity to large urban centres. I just think plants are so remarkable. They're all around us every day and they underpin every aspect of our lives and so often we don't notice them. <laughs>